greater trochanteric pain syndrome. So the main cause of this is our tendinopathy of our, or tears of our gluteus minimus or medius tendon. To locate these tendons, what we want to do is we want to palpate for our greater trochanter and start in a transverse view. And if we see we don't have bone underlying, we just need to scan inferiorly and then we come on to our greater trochanter. If we come too far, we're onto a round bone of our femur. So we want to see these flat facets and we know we're at our gluteal uh, insertions. So we can see here this little ridge and this represents our anterior facet and our lateral facet. So we want to start with our anterior facet, which is our gluteus minimus. So uh, with anything ultrasound, we want to be perpendicular to what we're looking at. So as we can see, that facet is extending down and ang uh, angling towards the front. So I'm going to roll my probe around so I can be more at 90 degrees to that facet. And we can see that footprint of our gluteus minim minimus a lot better. And so that's our transverse view. As I go superiorly, that tendon wants to dive away deep. So what we need to do is just fan our probe back to get that at 90 degrees again and to minimise our own isotropy. And we can see that extending down and continuing deep there. So we can assess, and as I'm assessing, I'm rolling with that tendon, same as we would the biceps in the shoulder. So we want to roll and fan as we come up. So we'll turn 90 degrees on there and there's our tendon at 90 degrees, and we can assess in a pretty neutral position our footprint of that gluteus minimus and just roll back and forth. As we want to see further down towards the musculotendinous junction, we need to go superiorly and just heel toe and push that top of that probe in and just put a bit of pressure into the patient. We're able to see that musculotendinous junction extending up towards the hip joint there. So we can assess all the way across that tendon from back and forth. Once we're happy with our assessment of the gluteus minimus, we just turn back transverse again. There's our gluteus minimus. We can see our gluteus medius muscle coming over the top of it there. To assess our tendon, we're just going to roll posterior. And what we find is we're onto our lateral facet there. Now the gluteus medius actually has a slightly oblique insertion at about 40 degrees. So what we need to do is we don't want to keep our true short axis on the femur. I want to rotate my probe and be more at 45 degrees to the femur, 40, 45. And then we can see there we're in a true short axis of that gluteus medius. So we're on our lateral facet here. Gluteus medius actually uh, occupies both the lateral facet and a superior posterior facet. So if we come a little bit further posterior and just continue up through, we can see a second facet, our posterior superior facet with our gluteus medius coming off there. So we want to follow that all the way through and we can see our two tendons and then we want to assess it in our long axis. So we'll come around 90 degrees to where we were and from our lateral facet, we can see this tendon comes off and it dives down. It's, the musculotendinous junction has a very steep decline. So I can come up and just a little bit of a heel toe just to get a, a nice appreciation of that and come back up onto our foot plate again. For our posterior superior facet, we will just roll around the back a little further and we'll come onto a, a thicker tendon. It's a more direct tendon. It has a direct attachment and it comes a bit more straighter. So this is a nice tendon to look at. So we can see that running across. We have a couple of little tendons attaching under that from our deep external rotators of the hip, but we're able to assess that posterior attachment there really nicely. So we'll scan all the way until we're off and back. Now we'll just come back into short axis again. So that's our posterior superior facet. And then we have a posterior facet, which is just a bare area and sometimes if we'll have a little bit of uh, bursal fluid this is where it will accumulate right back there posterior. So that's our gluteus minimus and medius. Our gluteus maximus has uh, in this case a majority of its attachment onto our iliotibial band coming across there. We can see that attaching on and then as we continue down just a small little attachment onto the femur. Just 
slightly posterior on that lateral aspect. We can see that just little tendon there, and this is where we might find our gluteus maximus tendinopathy, and also it's a, not an uncommon spot for uh, acute calcific tendonitis. So we might see uh, calcium back in there. So very important if the patient's indicating with one finger particularly a tender area around, we don't want to just exclude it as a general greater trochanteric pain syndrome. We want to make sure we assess a little area further down if they're very specific. So that's our gluteus maximus. So when we're doing injections of our trochanteric bursa, it's, we, if we have really our focus of tendinopathy on one tendon, we like to try to approach over that tendon for our injection. So if we're mainly seeing changes in our gluteus minimus, we want to have that in view and, and just the same as a, a bursal injection in the shoulder, just drop on over the top and just lay our uh, injectate over the top. Uh, obviously, fenestrating, intratendinous fenestration is also possible through this approach. Uh, for our true trochanteric bursal injection, we're likely just to go over the top of our gluteus medius there and we can see that bursa really nicely, a little bit of gluteus maximus lying and we'll just guide the needle in flat under onto there. We've got a lovely patient today. Some of them will be needing to approach from a more steeper angle. Uh, another thing to rule out with our lateral hip pain is occasionally we'll see our runners, particularly female runners, uh, present with our proximal iliotibial band syndrome. For this, we need to continue up and onto our iliac crest. So we'll go all the way up onto our iliac crest where we have our gluteus medius origin and our iliotibial band. So we can see here, we can appreciate that origin. It's just a very short, stubby little tendon. And what we wanna do is we wanna assess for any thickening of this tendon over the bone. But also importantly, we wanna look for any edema in the underlying muscle and overlying tissues. It's not uncommon to have a bit of chronic change through this area. It's about that uh, edema in the tissues around and focal tenderness over there. Uh, but that will typically present with a, a bit of discomfort through this upper lateral hip region. Uh, that's our lateral hip.